Exercise 1. English Letter Writing Listen to the conversation and fill in the missing information in the notes below. Hi, Lucy. Shall we go to swim after school? I'd like to, but I have to reply to my English teacher's letter. She has gone to America. You mean Susan? Yes. Why did she go back home? There are still some weeks left before the vacation. Her father died of cancer a week ago, and so she had to go back for her father's funeral. I see. I'm sorry to hear that. Lucy, do you have any time now? Yes, Tom. What can I do for you? I want to write a letter to my friend Bob. He went back to England yesterday and left his address for me, but I'm not sure how to write it. Okay. You know, English letter writing is different from Chinese writing. You should write your address in the top right-hand corner and write the date immediately below your address. Today is the 28th of March, 2002, so you should write the date below your address. That's really so different. We usually write the sender's address at the bottom of the letter or write it on the left corner of the envelope. Yes, that's right. Remember, don't write your name before your address. Where shall I write my name? You should write it at the end of the letter. I see. Then, you should write the recipient's name and address on the left-hand side of the page. So, I should write Bob's name and his address on the left-hand side? Yes. That is the formal way when you write business letters or official letters. But you don't need to write Bob's name and his address in an informal letter. Okay. What else? You must use Dear Sir or Dear Madam only when you don't know the person's name. How do I begin when I write to Bob? You should use his name directly. In the custom of English letter writing, don't begin with Dear Friend. I see. After that, I can start my writing, is that right? Yes, you should begin the letter on the left-hand side, a little way inside the margin. At the end of your letter, write a short final sentence on a separate line. What should I write for the last sentence? Usually, people write like this. I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon, or I hope to hear from you soon. Then, end with yours faithfully if you began with dear sir or madam. In formal letters, if you begin with Dear Mr. X, you should end with Yours Sincerely. I see. Don't use Dear Sir or Madam with Yours Sincerely or Dear Mr. X with Yours Faithfully. But what shall I use for Bob's letter? You can use Yours, Best Wishes, or Love in informal letters depending on how well you know the person. Thank you very much for the help. With pleasure. I have to go now. See you soon. Goodbye. Exercise 2 how to become a confident student. Listen to the talk and write down the missing information in the notes below. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our regular lecture on college study issues. This series of lectures is organized by the International Students' Office. We want to help you, the students of this university, to cope well with the study and social life here.
This series of lectures is designed to help you discover the ways in which you learn most easily and most enjoyably, and help you define your own goals and preferences as you embark on your college career and look ahead to life and work in the future. It includes discussions. Illustrations and easy to understand suggestions on ways to develop all the skills you will need to perform well in your classes and build confidence in your ability to learn. Some lectures will contain many ideas for strengthening a particular skill, but you can try out as many ideas as you like for studying. And also, You can adapt the ideas in the lectures to suit your own needs and personal learning style. Many students want to know how to be a confident student. It's a good question. Strategies for becoming a confident and successful student include making use of the four keys to success in college discussed in this lecture. 1. To assess your academic strengths and weaknesses. 2. To discover and use your learning style. 3. To sharpen your thinking and study skills. 4. To adapt to others' styles. Let's talk about the first one. To assess your academic strengths and weaknesses, Means to be realistic about what you are able to do. This will help you select courses in which you can succeed. This is the most important key when you enter college. The second key is to discover and use your learning style. This is another important key to your success. Use your five senses to help you take in information accurately and remember what you learn. Let your body's reactions tell you when you are most alert. Then try to plan your schedule accordingly. Know which learning environment you prefer, but be willing to adapt to others. Increase your level of motivation. By developing an internal focus of control. A third key to your success in college is your effort to develop critical thinking and study skills. Making decisions, solving problems, using creativity, processing information, and reasoning logically are critical thinking skills involved in studying. All the important study skills you will need to develop or improve, such as how to take notes, listen effectively, read with greater comprehension, and prepare for and take tests, are covered in the next lectures. The fourth key is your willingness to adapt to your instructor's teaching styles. If you make an honest effort to learn, No matter how an instructor approaches a subject, then you will make efficient use of class time and develop good relations with your instructors.